This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans, go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. It is November first, two thousand twenty-one. Jonathan Osborne here. Tonight I'm joined by Kevin Tucker. Luke could not make it tonight, but we had to record this episode. First of all, Kevin Tucker, sir, how the heck are you? Well, I think we're about to talk about how good I am tonight. I got some uh, got some <sighs> good feelings tonight. You know, I don't know why. I'm just in a great mood. I have no idea why. Franz MFing Wagner. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, Franz Wagner. We. I don't think we've ever recorded an emergency pod pretty much based off of one quarter of performance. And what we saw out of Franz Wagner, really the entire game tonight, but specifically in the fourth quarter, um, we just felt like we had to come on here and, and talk about it. Kevin, before we like really break down what we just witnessed in that fourth quarter on the road in, in Minnesota in the, the Target Center, I think, or as I like to refer to it as, is Am- Amway North. Um, we owned the Timberwolves the last two seasons in Minnesota. Ooh, just man, oh man, you yeah. Could not last year the Cole game yeah. winner, and we'll talk about Cole again here in a second. But man, yeah, the last two years in Minnesota, ooh, they hate seeing us roll into that building. <laughs> <laughs> T- tell me how you feel about what just what we just witnessed. Let me let me just let me talk you through from start to finish how kind of because this game uh, it was a little up and down. You know, the first half wasn't great. Even even through the third quarter, there was a lot of uh, some issues there. But the the star of the show through three quarters, as well as Franz played, it was Cole Anthony. Like, what a night. And even, you know, when you look at his stats. Through the first the night, 43 minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. He ended up with, like, uh, he ended up almost a triple-double. Uh, let's see. He had uh, 31, 9, and 8. Any other night of the year, that's all we're talking about. Cole Anthony, who was amazing. Because he was. He was lights out. Amazing. And so, you know, we we had joked about some things we we're going to put on the Twitter account, talking about Cole Anthony owning the Minnesota Timberwolves, being the father and all that kind of stuff, because he was killing it. And then all of a sudden, we go to that fourth quarter, and Mr. Franz Wagner shows up. And uh, he put on a performance that we haven't seen for a Magic player in a long time as a rookie. And uh, I, I don't really have words, because, I mean, first he's knocking down triples. He's knocking down triples, which he's done very well, obviously, all season long. He, he gets another layup at the basket. And then, obviously, it's the play we're going to watch for the rest of his career. The hammer on three guys going to his right. And I don't know. I mean, it is it is 10.56 p.m. This game has been over for 20 minutes. I, I don't know how many times I've watched that dunk already. Yeah. Like 40? Like, I can't stop watching it. And every time I watch it, I'm just enjoying it because I'm watching a different reaction every time. It's just... It's crazy what what he did tonight. That was so fun. So my current living situation, uh, while my wife and I wait for our new home to be built, we're staying with my parents. So everything, like we sleep in this room that I record the podcast in. I record the podcast in this room. My poor wife is sleeping six feet to my right. And when he dunked, I jumped up and was literally convulsing and gave her a heart attack. She had no idea what was happening. Um, just woke up like she thought the house was on fire. I looked like Danny Zuko. Um, I've got chills and they're multiplying and I'm losing control because <laughs> the power that you're supplying is electrifying. And that's that's the only way, if you, if you guys saw that on the YouTube video, that's the only way that I can describe what went, what went through my body in that moment. So, Kevin, I want to I wanna walk the listeners through uh, like the last quarter and a half of this game, so uh, let's we'll fast forward um, to the third quarter here. So, uh, oh my gosh, I have no. I, we are so unprepared for this podcast, folks. <laughs> Usually, I spend about four hours prepping for these shows. So, eight minutes, eighteen seconds left. Jordan McLaughlin hits a two point shot to put the Timberwolves up twelve on the road. What was this? Our sixth game in nine nights. Uh, the last game of a three-game road trip, um, you were gassed. The last game that we lost against the Detroit Pistons, like 
third quarter, down double digits, last game of a road trip. You're in Minnesota. It's cold as heck. You had every excuse to just pack it in and be like, all right, guys, like this game's over. Let's get home. Let's get some rest. And they kind of closed the gap. You're down six at the end of the third. And then Cole Anthony just literally takes over. Cole Anthony finishes the night with 31 points, 14 of those in the third quarter, or in the fourth quarter, excuse me. Um, the Magic start the fourth quarter. Terrence hits a shot. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin um, makes one free throw. Then Chuma hits a three. Then Cole hits a three. Cole hits another three. Uh, and like from then, now it's a four-point game, and all of a sudden we, like we have ourselves a ball game. Okay, And it's kind of going back and forth. Um, Cole makes a 17-foot pull-up with seven minutes to go. Magic, um, I think at that point, yeah, we go up six. So you're like, okay, we're, we're putting some things together. Cole comes right down the other end, the next series, hits another three to put the Magic up by nine. At this point, you start feeling pretty good. Anthony Edwards comes back, hits a three. It's a six-point game with six minutes left. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a dogfight the rest of the way. And then Franz Wagner literally takes over. Yeah, and so this is what's really important for me is the reason why this is important is because the previous three games, we had been in the game in the fourth quarter at some point and then ended up losing it for whatever reason, various reasons, the three different games. And so I kind of had this feeling, you know, kind of looming over us that, okay, we're in this game. It's close, couple possessions either side. I feel like, you know, there's a chance we have this tracker to this this last week of giving up games in the fourth quarter. And so that is why what happens next is so important because Franz literally took over and said it's not happening tonight. And it was awesome. So up six, uh, 540 to go. Franz Wagner makes a layup. Okay, whatever the the Timberwolves do the rest of this game is just really not important. Like it it just isn't. Okay, Um, they didn't do much, by the way. They really didn't. Forty. 43 seconds later, Franz hits a three from a Jalen Suggs assist, okay? Then Jalen comes down, um, I think it was late in the shot clock, misses a a step back jumper, go down the other end. uh, Vanderbilt has a couple of free throws. We come down the other end, Franz hits another three, puts us up nine, and we're like, okay, like things are are really starting to happen now. We get the, the ball back. Franz, you you already described it perfectly. Driving to his right, it was over Vanderbilt mostly, and, and I think one or two other guys. Just like Franz elevates, and we're like, what is about to happen? Dunks all over him. I start convulsing. Everybody is freaking out, and here we are now. The Magic end up winning this game by 18. Like they're like the first. So that dunk was 338. So basically, within nine minutes of this game. The Magic go from being down six um, to, uh, at that point, they were then up 13. So we're talking about, in nine minutes, what is that, like a 16-point swing, being down three, then up 13? Yeah, like, the Timberwolves like, Excuse me, hit being it. down six to being up 13. So 19-point swing. Go ahead, Kevin. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, that the Timberwolves, while all this is happening, could not hit anything. Now, they were taking terrible shots. They were visibly frustrated. The game was completely getting away from them. Um, not unlike some of the late game scenarios we've seen from the Magic in the last week. But uh, yeah, forty-three to nineteen in the fourth quarter. I'm trying to remember the last time an Orlando Magic team outscored an opponent by twenty-four in the fourth quarter. It's got to have been a long time. I mean, it's just just crazy. I mean, that was that was wild. And it, it, here's here's my thing. Like, I'm I'm really I'm really not trying to get too carried away. I remember back in 2004-2005, Dwight Howard's rookie season. The first few games, you know, it was, he was new to the new to the you know the league and everything, just coming out of high school, playing okay, getting a lot of rebounds. But he had a game. I think it was in November. I, feel, I think it was later November. It was. I remember it was against Atlanta when he like really went off. He had like 24 or something like that. And that was the night where I was like, oh shoot, like. We got somebody here, like really kind of announced his presence to the team and to the league. I don't want to jump to conclusions, Jonathan, but those few minutes there from Franz was like, oh, shoot. Here's the thing. You and I were there on draft night at Amway Center, and the consensus was everyone was super pumped about Suggs. That Franz guy is a question mark. I don't really know a lot about him. Magic fans know about Franz Wagner now. They sure do, especially after tonight, man. This is... We might get, we might have somebody here. 
This is the thing, Kevin. I don't think you're jumping to conclusions. This is an this is now eight games of Franz Wagner. Yeah. Okay. I tweeted this out earlier tonight that I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get too crazy, but I feel like I would put this eight game Wagner stretch that we've seen up against any eight game stretch that we ever saw out of Aaron Gordon. I I don't feel like that's wrong. Like Aaron Gordon, you know, probably a little bit more higher of a ceiling in terms of a one on one defender, but Franz is very, very good defensively and is just so good offensively and has just been incredibly consistent. Like he just keeps doing this. Looking at his just last five games, twenty eight points tonight, the career high, uh, but nineteen points against Detroit, ten points against Toronto. He was an intricate part in that comeback the last few minutes. Uh, 15 points against Charlotte, 15 points against Miami. Like He's doing this every single night. Right now he's averaging 15.6 points per game. Just crazy. And when you think 49% about... 49% from the floor, 43% from the three-point line. I don't think NBA right now is accounting... NBA stats, I don't think that's accounting for tonight. Yeah, it, this, is, this is what's crazy, is when you're coming into this season, you think about the potential starting five for the Magic without injuries. The two guys that most people had on the fence as far as starting, Cole Anthony and Franz Wagner. Now when Markel comes back and Jonathan Isaac comes back, and now we've got Okiki who's back, it's like you you cannot, right now, I know we're talking about Franz, you can't take Cole out of the starting lineup. And the way Franz is playing, you can't take him out of the starting lineup either. So Moe's has a tough decision. But all that to say is like those were the two biggest question marks for most people coming into the season as far as who would start. And they're answering all of those questions. They had 59 combined tonight and literally put the whole team on their back in the fourth quarter to ensure that we would not lose this game tonight. Well, Just what a show. What a show, man. I don't think we're jumping to conclusions where when we say we have something with Franz because I just, like, sure, the shooting can take a little bit of a dip. After tonight, he's going to be shooting over, like, 49, like, like probably, like, 45% from three. If I had to guess, he went five of nine tonight. So he might have that jump from 43 to like 45, maybe yeah. like 46. I'm not great at math and doing that on the fly. But like even if the shooting takes a little bit of a dip, I just he, the the shots he's taking, the confidence in which he's shooting the ball, his form, I don't see the shooting falling off of a cliff and it's like everything that he's doing is easily replicable. Yeah. He's got a bag, first of all. He's got dribble moves. He's taking bigger guys off the dribble. He's posting up smaller guys. He's cutting when he should be cutting. He's making plays for other guys. Like, am I crazy to think that this kid could end up being better than Hito Turkoglu? Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That West. is a hot take. That is a hot take. That is a hot take. He's a better but. defender already than Hito ever was. That's true. Let's put that out there. I'm not saying he's better than Hito right now. But like, I, I this is eight games, okay? <laughs> I but I see the path for it to be possible, right? I don't I'll, see any reason why he can't keep up this level of play, at least near this level of play. Not right. what we saw tonight, like twenty eight points a game, no. But right now, yeah. averaging fifteen points a game, I don't know why he can't be like thirteen to fifteen points a game. Yeah, and admittedly, I didn't see the beginning of Turkaloo's career. You know, he was in Orlando. But I, I doubt, I doubt that he did in the, his no. first eight games what Franz has done in his fir- first eight games. I don't know that for certain. You know, we can check it out. But uh, yeah, I mean, you you said one of the things I was going to mention. Some of the moves he has, some of his dribbling, you know, behind the back and little, little spinoramas, and like I'm like, what is this guy? And it's all smart. None none of it feels rushed or in forced transition. or flashy. It is, it is the right basketball play for the moment that he is in. His IQ is through the roof, and I feel so dumb right now saying this about a, a rookie eight games in, but it's hard to argue with what we've seen, man, especially tonight. Like, oh, I just can't. I, I'm really struggling. Like, I cannot believe this is happening. That was, I'm almost at a loss for words. This is wild. This is wild. Really quickly, we're not trying to crap on Hito here. First eight games, nope. three points, zero points, six points, two points, two points, zero points, zero points, four points. Was not doing what Franz is doing in his first eight Wait, games. Wait, combined, did he have 28 points in his first eight games? Uh, maybe not. Maybe no, not. No, I don't think he did. Um, wow. Yeah, Franz Wagner, man. Just the kid is just literally, he's got it all. 
He can he can take guys off the dribble. He can shoot. He can pass. We haven't seen too much out of him, you know, in terms of like being a rebounder, three point six points, you know, three point six rebounds a game. I feel like if he really was focused on that, he could, you know, be a, a little bit better of a rebound. But like the kid can do everything. Like he was promised. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Game of Thrones, but Franz Wagner is the prince that was promised. This kid was promised at eight by the Orlando Magic by Jeff Weltman and John Hammond. I feel so dumb because I know that I get emotional about this team, and I'm getting emotional about this team right now. We could look three weeks from now back at this and like, wow, that was completely wrong. (laughs) But in the moments when I do criticize John Hammond and Jeff Weltman for certain things that they do that haven't done everything right, the vast majority of things they've done right. And it like tonight, it feels like we got a freaking steal at eight with Franz Wagner. Uh, it's, I it's am crazy. so I mean, excited. Yeah, it's, it's uh you know, you guys talked about, you know, the uh, the game against the Pistons, you know, how we said Kate Cunningham was the third best rookie on the floor that night. That was true. And tonight, even with Suggs, you know, we, I'd love to talk about some of the other guys on the team tonight. Not, you know, Suggs, a homecoming, it was always going to be a high-pressure game for him tonight, you know. Once again, shooting struggles a little bit, but he's still playing smart. You know, he's still playing smart. But once again, Franz Wagner, the best rookie on the floor. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to talk about some of the other guys too, because as great as Franz and Cole were, and they literally were the stars of the show, other guys played really well too. You know, I thought Mo, he had some tough calls against him, got him in foul trouble, but four blocks, he was really, really strong in the paint tonight. Had some great, great uh, defensive stops there. I mean, Wendell was strong too, five of eight from the field. Um, uh, Chuma came in, didn't didn't shoot great, but he hit that big one in the fourth that kind of helped spur on the uh, the comeback there. I don't know, you know, the rest of the team honestly, some some good stuff, but not a whole lot until the, those two guys kind of kind of took over in the fourth. But either way, we needed that win bad. We really did. It was four games in a row. Um, if you look at the schedule, this game is like the only game that you can circle on the schedule. Like, okay, that, reasonably, that's a win. Um, the rest of November, most of December, it's really going to get rough. So if you were going to get a win here over the next couple of weeks, this was the one, you know, four in a row, two, you know, tough losses, Toronto, Detroit, like back to back. This was the game that you needed to win. And it is not a, like, uh, like an exaggeration to say that we won this game primarily because of Cole Anthony and Franz Wagner's performance, uh, in the fourth quarter, they outscored, uh, Minnesota by themselves. 24-19. Twenty-four to nineteen. That's yeah. where this like starts and ends. Cole Anthony, five of six from the floor in the fourth quarter, four of five from three, added four rebounds, three assists, one steal. Uh, Franz Wagner, fourteen points, four of seven from the floor, two of three from three. They were just amazing. Uh, Mo Bamba, kind of quiet fourth quarter offensively, four points, but added three rebounds, an assist, and a block. It was honestly big in that fourth quarter. Cole, Mo, Franz, Jalen, um, you know, really played most of the fourth quarter. Jalen, you know, solid night out of him tonight. You, it's good to see him perform well, especially in his hometown. End of the night, 15 points, four rebounds, one steal, one block, five turnovers. Again, that's the main problem with Jalen right now. The turnovers, just not shooting the ball well. We just continue to see flashes out of him, and I'm like, he's, he's totally going to be fine. Um, the bench, you know, wasn't incredible tonight um but we're very very solid uh, you get eight points out of okiki five points out of ross um just going down like the bench you know plus minus plus 14 for okiki 13 for ross four for ha- uh, hampton 15 for moritz wagner so yeah um the- kept the rotation super tight tonight uh just nine games it was eight uh nine guys excuse me it was eight guys for most of this game right yeah the, the thing with the bench tonight is they didn't break you you know that yeah. they they have broken the magic multiple times over the course of the season. Obviously, the biggest one we think of is that game in Detroit last week. But they didn't break you tonight. They kept you in the game and allowed the starters, gave the starters a chance to to crawl back into this game there in the fourth quarter. And uh, I'd say they did. They they did a pretty good job of that. Yeah, I definitely think so. And you know, Philip Rossman Reich did a great job of this. I think it was today's episode of Locked On Magic where he talked about. You know, Jamal is a rookie. He's a rookie head coach, obviously. He's learning. What you want to see from him game to game is growth. And he said a lot of the things that Luke and I said um, on the podcast that we recorded last night. Is that, you know, there were some issues, you know, with his decisions in the game against the Pistons that ultimately led to the Magic losing. 
But tonight was his chance to kind of right that wrong and show us that he's growing from that. I like you look at the the minutes on this game. Uh, Franz played 30 minutes, Wendell 35 minutes, Mo 33 minutes, Cole 38 minutes, Jalen Suggs 32 minutes. I may be mistaken. I do not think there was a moment in this game where one of those four was not on the floor, uh, especially Cole and Jalen. I don't think there was a moment in this game where we didn't have at least one of those guys on the floor at all times. If we did, it was seconds. And I think that was a big part um, in this win. And I think moving forward, unfortunately, we're going to have to see some of that. Um, I I think we might be able to do a little bit better of kind of staggering the minutes um, you know, with a guy like, you know, Moritz Wagner to get Wendell and Mo, you know, a little bit more of a breather. But I criticized Mosley for not going all out for the win the other night in Detroit. He went all out for this win, and I give him all the credit in the world for being able to do that. Um, it showed a lot of, like, growth and the fact that he is realizing, like, the starters are playing so well, you've got to ride them kind of as much as you can. So props to Mosley tonight. Just Kevin, this is going to be a long season. We're like we're getting into the point where I think the season is going to be somewhat discouraging. Wins like this, so much fun. We really need to appreciate this and enjoy this. Um, you know, two and six Magic team. We're recording an emergency podcast, <laughs> uh, but this game was just so much fun, Kevin. I'm I'm so excited about the future of this team. Yeah, and, and I also say I think games like this are so important for the players themselves. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't know that for certain. I'm not a player, but I would imagine going through the season that is likely to come, you know that you are building for the future. Like these guys on this team, they know they're not probably not going to compete for a Larry O'Brien trophy this year, but in their mind, they know they are building something for the future. And so getting wins like tonight, there's those, those little reassurances, right? That like we're on the right track. This is what we're capable of. We can someday put together performances like this over a full 82-game season into the playoffs. But for now, we're going to see glimpses of it, and I think it just motivates them further to go, you know what, this is what we're working for. You know, nights like these, we can do this a lot more often in the future. So I'm totally with you, man. That was a lot of fun. Um, I, I'll just say I'm I'm a little less concerned about this week um, with the two games coming up. You know, Boston is in shambles right now. Uh, they lost again tonight. San Antonio, they had a great first game against us, obviously, um, but they've lost a lot of games since then. They have a lot more weapons that I'm concerned about, but I think those two games are winnable. I'm not going to say you know we we should be favored, but I think those are more of a, a coin toss than, than um, others may think. I think we get one of those, but you're right. After this week, man, it's a gauntlet. It's going to be a real grind, and we'll see how they uh, answer that. I love the point that you made. Like, these... Gary Harris, I I keep going back to this quote from Media Day, but Gary Harris talked about how important it was uh, for Denver and that core that you see now having a lot of success early on in their careers, learning how to win. And he talked about how important that was for this team, that if they can just find out how to win early on, they have a chance to be very special, very successful. And this is what we're talking about. Like You have a chance on the road to win a game down double digits in the third quarter, and you come back and you win that game against a team that's got no slouches. Anthony Edwards, very good player. Carl Anthony Towns, very good player. All right. You know, Jaden McDaniels, a guy, you know, coming into his own. You got guys like D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley. Um, this is not a, a team that's, you know, a pushover by any means. Uh, they've been playing okay, you know, to, to start the season, but getting this win again on the road. This team just needs to learn how to win. And as we continue, like Chuma, you know, he's back. It's it's great to see him in the lineup, not playing particularly well right now. Um, but I think it's just rust. Like, I'm not going to worry about Chuma for like another two or three weeks at least. Uh, but as we get Jonathan Isaac back, as we get Markel Fultz back, Cole Anthony coming into his own, Franz Wagner, we've just like gushed over him this entire podcast. Jalen Suggs, as he continues to get better, Kevin, when, when we get healthy, like, I'm not memeing. You you literally need to watch out for the Orlando Magic because I think we are going to surprise some people when we get healthy. I totally agree. And um, I saw a stat today that, you know, we, we just had these two back-to-backs last week, you know, made it five games and seven nights. We don't have another back-to-back for another three weeks. And so while the opponents here in the next few weeks are going to be very challenging, we will at least be rested and not faced with the same kind of back-to-back gauntlet that we faced last week. Um, and so I... 
I think you're right. I think there are some nights we're going to surprise some people. You know, that game in New York, no one expected us to win, and, and we were able to sneak one. So I don't think we'll go, you know, totally winless over the next few weeks, but nights like this is what's really important, and this is what gives us hope for the future. It's just it's hard not to be really excited and, and just, you know, it's just such a fun game tonight. Last thing that I'll say about Franz Wagner, like looking at him pre-draft, you know, kind of watching the way that he played, um, you know, his – uh, the like press conference right after the draft media day. Like this is a guy that you could easily perceive to be like a little bit timid. This kid plays with a fire, man. He's hitting threes. He's talking trash like to the the fans sitting courtside. He's pumping his fist. He's psyching himself up. Like Franz Wagner is just so much fun to watch play basketball. I I cannot believe it. And you know where he gets that uh, that little chip from? It's from his big bro. Dude. I don't know if you guys have seen Mo Wagner. That dude <laughs> runs his mouth. All night long, and I love every second of it. That's one thing we noticed, the home opener against uh, the Knicks. There was not a player on the Knicks he would back down from. He was talking to everyone. He was, he was talking to Tibbs, too, running his mouth at Thibodeau. Uh, it, was, it was unbelievable. So uh, I think Franz gets a little bit of that from his big brother, and I am just totally here for all of it. It's so much fun. All right, uh, Kevin, last thing I want to talk about today, the uh, mixtape City Edition jerseys for all 30 NBA teams was released um, including the Orlando Magic, so we, we you know we've got some sneak peeks of this you know over the last couple of weeks, some leaks if you will, um, but basically those were all accurate. We know exactly what we've got. So uh, basically, the best way that I can describe it is it it kind of looks like anthracite gray. It, it kind of looks black. It looks darker than the anthracite gray jersey that we had a couple of years ago. In some lights, it looks really black. In some lighting, it looks a little bit gray, depending on which photos you're looking at. And then it's got the orange pinstripes, obviously, but the pinstripes aren't your ordinary pinstripes. Um, it says, why not us, why not now? From the you know the 1995 uh, finals run, you know, Rich DeVos said, you know, why not us, why not now? You know, why can't we go on to win the title? This team isn't winning the title, obviously, but it's a cool little homage back to that era. Uh, and then down the sides, the paneling, it's got like the orange gradient stripes and then down at the bottom of the shorts, it has the original Orlando Magic logo from 89, but obviously it's orange. So, um, Kevin, what were your thoughts on that? How do you feel about the the mixtape city edition? Yeah, I, I I like it. You know, I think it's 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 in some ways it's kind of the the uh, end cap of this whole like orange theme that we've had the last you know two seasons, and now this one being the third season. You know, apparently this is our last year of the orange theme. At least that's what I've read. So. Um, which I'm I'm okay with, you know, this little orange era. It was cool. It was different. I'd I'd be okay if it never comes back ever again. You know, uh, it's it's just not magic basketball to me. Uh, but it's cool. It's different, and and I do like it. I think it's the best of the three. Uh, well, the two others. I think it's better than the two others. I love the old school magic on the front. Um, the pinstripes. I'm. It, some people think it's cheesy. I love the why not us, why not now as the pinstripes going down. Um, all I know. Uh, Jonathan is that uh, I'm looking forward to ordering a little number 22 Franz Va- Franz Wagner and I tweeted that earlier today before tonight. Did. I'm not on the I'm not on the Wagner bandwagon tonight. I was on it earlier, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm totally getting a Franz version of that. You know, it's, that's that's gonna be awesome. I think I am as well. Um, it's just like he's just so much fun to watch play basketball. It's it's ridiculous. I'm still getting my Jalen Suggs, um, but I've wanted like the the white version of that. I don't have anyone in that jersey style uh yeah. like the white with the blue pinstripe so i'm looking forward to that but yeah the biggest critique that i have outside of the anth- anthracite gray uh the image that i'm looking at right now it looks very much gray and, and not as black so i'm excited to see how they look like on tv on the players like kind of in person but you go with the like the old school magic font but then you keep the modern numbers that just like when you look at it, it's just like a clash of styles. I don't think it looks great. I wish they would have went with the old, um, like the the Van Dijk, Van Dijk, whatever that font style is. Um, but that, like the old school numbers from like the Shaq Penny days. Uh, yeah, if they would have done that. It just would have been like the cherry on top for me. Yeah, if you read up on these mixtape editions, you know, when you read up, it says they're supposed to be a mix of you know modern and and the past and all that kind of stuff. But I'm with you, dude. I think. I think the modern look that you get is the actual jersey style, you know, the, the wishbone cut. and yeah, and then the the newer looking pinstripes that kind of fade up and everything or, or pan out and everything. But you're right, I I would have loved to see the old school uh, numbers as well. Um, 
Yeah, I, I the other thing, oh, that's what I was going to say. Another thing that's really cool about these, you know, if you've seen all the jerseys this year that the players wear, with it being the 75th anniversary, you got that diamond Nike logo, you got the diamond NBA logo, which is really cool. You and I have talked about this. I'm really bummed, though, that um, those ones and our normal black ones are the only ones that they're selling to the public that have that diamond logo. I was really hoping to get a white one that had the diamond logo. So if you've been looking for that, just so you know, we have confirmed with the uh, – the team shop that the only ones that are going to have that 75th anniversary logo are um, the icon, which is the black and then the uh, city edition. So I was a little bummed about that, but uh, either way, it's still cool to see on the city edition. Yeah. All the game edition jerseys have that like diamond, right. you know, that like iridescent Nike logo, which is, is really cool. But unfortunately we're only getting that on a, on a couple of jerseys. Um, yeah. Last note, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a mix of modern and, you know, the past, the orange is modern enough for me. Like that's just that's, not a that's random true. Match basketball. Totally true. So, totally um, true. but yeah, man, what a night, what a win. Uh, the magic will be back at it Wednesday night. We'll take on the Celtics at home. I'm so sick of playing the Celtics. Yeah. Like ridiculously, the Celtics, the Spurs sick of playing those teams. Um, so yeah, uh, Kevin, any, any final thoughts before we go ahead and sign off here? <laughs> uh, I'll just say I, I don't think we're going to have an emergency pod after Wednesday night. You know, I just feel like tonight was something special. But uh, that's really what it was, man. It was special. It was really cool. I think, again, I'm trying not to get too carried away. But this could be a night that we look back on in two, five, ten years and go, whoa, that that was the night. That was the night. And we'll see we'll see how it shakes out. I agree. Last thing I wanted to do, a quick shout-out to our patrons. Uh, failed to shout you guys out on the episode that we released this morning. So a quick shout-out to you guys. Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Keith Garcia, Zico, Carson Tulo, Nathan Lynn, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Norm L, Magic Player History, and our newest patron, Julio. Really, really appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the support. If you guys want to support the podcast, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Guys, that's going to do it for us. Uh, for Kevin Tucker, this has been Jonathan Osborne. This has been an emergency podcast of the six man show, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Six Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. Please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It would really help us out a lot. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at Six Man Show, and like us on Facebook. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!